Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we're in the Serengeti National Park here in Tanzania. And we're going to talk about today is what you should know before you come on a safari here in the Serengeti and in Tanzania in general because there's some other great places to visit aside from just the Serengeti here in Tanzania. And the thing is when people are going to be doing a safari in East Africa or especially here in Tanzania, most of the time people are actually going to use tour companies to do that and there are dozens and dozens of companies you can choose from. So make sure you're doing your research to figure out when which one's the best one for you because some may focus on more wildlife some may have special stuff for families but in general they're all kind of offering the same kind of drives and stuff like that so your really big difference in price isn't so much where they're going to go it's where you're going to stay okay and usually when you're hiring a tour for the serengeti there's usually three options you've got the budget option which is you know the, the basic camps kind of stuff you have the middle price option which might be a little bit nicer camps you're going to stay at and have a little bit more few more fewer more amenities and then there's the luxury camps which is really like you're in a camp but you're like my goodness this is like i'm camping in a you know glamping it up so there's kind of three options you have to think about so when you're thinking about the price the big difference is isn't actually the accommodation because no matter what you do you're going to be seeing the same beautiful animals i'm sure you'll see some maybe some zebras go by out there maybe a wildebeest or two heck we might have one of the big five come by and the buffalo and stuff like that so you do have that but i want you to really think is that's where your, your price differences are going to come in is in your accommodation okay now when you're doing your research about the tour companies you're going to be looking at one obviously look at the reviews for them but also what i want you to think about is look at and make sure that they're going to tailor the tour just for you because there's so many of them out there that you don't have to go with one that's not going to give you like help and so what they'll do is that most of them will actually tailor the trip just for you like what do you really want to see do you want to spend more time in the serengeti you know going through the ingorgor crater you know conservation area what is it you really want to kind of see and so you really need to talk to them about that because they will lay out a day by day itinerary for you. And the thing is, what I got to warn you is like, if you do get this itinerary, make sure they send it to you and they'll send you a contract. Like this is what we're going to do. This is where we're going to stay and things like that. And if you're at one of the middle price or higher luxury ones, believe me, it's going to be your stuff and you're going to be just fine. And you might actually have a Jeep to yourself. The thing is though, if you're going to be going on one of the more basic, one of the, you know, the budget versions of things, it's not unheard of that you might book with one company and then all these companies, like the cheaper companies might all pool people together in one other company's Jeep. So you want to be careful with that. Okay. So just have a heads up because that could happen. So before I get too far ahead of myself, you probably want to know is Mark, how do we actually get to the Serengeti? Cause you know, I know where Tanzania is, it's in East Africa, but how do I get to the Serengeti itself? Well, the thing is you'll probably fly into uh, Kilimanjaro airport. It's kind of by Arusha. It's southeast of the Serengeti park and you'll fly into there. And the thing is there's other options you have from there. If you want to go for the luxury side, you might see some little tiny plane Cessnas flying by behind me occasionally. You could actually fly in from, from Kilimanjaro to one of the small airfields here in the Serengeti. I think there's five or six of them that you can come in, okay? Now, if you're not gonna spend the big bucks like that, which we didn't do, you might actually start your Jeep tour and your safari in Kilimanjaro. Like, you'll go there and you might do a little hike in Kilimanjaro and something like that. It's so beautiful to see. And then from there, you'll head out and go by Lake Manyara, which is really great. We got to see elephants walking by and tons of baboons and all kinds of stuff. That was a really fantastic national park to go into. And then we'll spend a night there. And then we went through the Ngora Gora uh, crater. Oh my gosh, that conservation area. That's where you're going to get a better chance to see the rhinos and actually here in the Serengeti. And then another day you're, you're doing another, you know, Jeep tour to get here. And then, oh my gosh, you come into the Serengeti. And once you come in through the gate where you're like, oh my gosh, there's animals everywhere. And there's animals all the way in here, but it's really kind of a great thing. So basically you got a couple days in Jeeps, in your safari Jeeps, coming here uh, from the Kilimanjaro or you're going to fly the last little bit here in a small plane. Okay. So that's basically how you get here. Also, if you're from the U.S. or other countries, you're probably going to need a visa as well. And you can get your visa when you land. For U.S. citizens, it's $100. For like EU or Canadian citizens or other places that might need visas, it's probably less. But you need to have a $100 bill or, you know, 250s. But like it has to be a newer bill, a nice crisp bill for them to do that for you. But it takes no time at all. You just get in the visa line. They give you the visa kind of stuff. You go in the normal passport line. They take a picture of you and your visa actually has your picture on it easiest pie you grab your luggage and you're out the door okay now once you're here in the serengeti you're probably gonna ask yourself mark 
How are we going to get around, all right? If you have the Jeep Safari that picks you up, you're staying in your Jeep the whole time. That is going to be your home away from home when you're here, okay? And the Jeeps usually hold six to seven tourists with the driver slash guide that you have. And those guides, those those guys, they will make or break your trip because they will tell you, there's no, that's a cheetah, this is this bird, this is that bird, this is how, why, this is the leopard and how you can tell the difference. They really know their stuff and they'll have binoculars and things like that to share with you and really help you enjoy the trip more. Our guy, Moody, he's been fantastic he's a really awesome dude and he's really made this a great trip for us and for the kids but you really are in that Jeep all the time and the thing is is when you're going around you might want to make sure you have something to cover your face or know how to close the windows quickly because it does get very dusty here and it's not because the animals are going by it's because the other Jeeps are going by and they kick up all this dirt so it gets a little dusty well a lot dusty when you come here so that might be something to think about another thing you need to realize is you're gonna be in that Jeep the whole time you don't get to wander out there in the Serengeti you're not you don't get out of the you don't get out of your Jeep at all what it happens is the Jeep the top of it pops up and makes like a canopy for you so you actually stand up and you're taking your pictures you know while you're standing up in the Jeep which is really kind of a cool thing but the reason they don't let you out it's a safety thing okay now if you have to go potty yes they'll let you out but you're not gonna go wander off behind that bush over there no you're gonna go either behind the Jeep and pee there or do whatever there or on the side of the Jeep Okay, not like literally on the side, but you're going to say squat next to the side of the Jeep because you don't want to wander off because it's not necessarily safe because there are awesome animals here and animals that might find you a little bit tasty as well. And the thing is, you're probably going to see is, Mark, what animals do I going to see here? Well, I want to talk about there's the big five. Okay, the big five, you have the rhino, the black rhino, the leopard, the lion, the elephant and the Cape buffalo. Or, well, that's not there was one out here before, but I guess he's wandered off. Those are the big five. The thing is, when you think of animals in Africa, you think of zebras and gazelles and impalas and lions and elephants. Believe me, you will see more zebras than you've ever seen in your entire life when you're here. Gazelles going by, hyenas running in packs and stuff like that. It is just gorgeous. So when you're coming here, make sure you pack a, a because your phone camera is not going to be good enough. I mean, you, you get a lot of good photos with it, but if you can bring a nice camera with a telephoto lens, man, you can get up close and personal shots with the lions and the cheetahs and stuff like that. It is very cool, okay? Now, if we focus on the big five here in the Serengeti, you have pretty, not guaranteed, but you have a really good chance of seeing elephants or the Cape Buffalo and the lion. Those are the three kind of easiest ones to see when you're here of the big five the leopard is a bit tougher to find because they hide very well and then the black rhino is very very difficult to find here in serengeti and that's where you're most likely that's why going outside a bit and going to the ngorogora um, crater conservation area is going to be your best bet to see the rhino here in tanzania to see all the big five but you'll see so many other animals and birds and stuff like that it's fantastic do bring a list of all the possible animals you could see when you're here so you can check them off because it is kind of a cool thing going you know we've gone like oh we've got one of five we got two of five three we got we got four of the big five so far and we got cheetahs as well it is really kind of a cool thing now when you're driving through the serengeti what you need to realize is these aren't paved roads these are dirt roads okay and they are bumpy they are very bumpy and all of the drivers would tell you they're like hey or the guys would tell you i'm going to give you an african massage because the roads are like da, 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 da. sometimes it could be a bit rough but don't worry you'll be safe the drivers are pretty cautious they just you're feeling like well we're tilting a lot this way well yeah because you got the roads and we want to get out into nature i mean we're in the serengeti so you do have that and i will tell you if you do get motion sickness you might want to bring some pills for that especially if you have like you might have a picnic lunch during the day while you're out exploring the serengeti and you might get another or bumpy spot you might think oh i might need a little motion sickness help that's that can happen but that happens more on the roads coming to the serengeti i would say than in the serengeti because when you look at the animals it's more of a slow drive around because you actually can't stand up in the jeeps while they drive around and it's kind of cool to to watch the things and stuff like that now the next thing we need to talk about is your accommodation and remember that's where your price difference of your tours really comes to a fact from basic middle to luxury okay the luxury camps are going to have when you're here i mean we're talking like king size beds with shower and toilet in your tent and all these things and it's just gorgeous you feel like you're in some fancy hotel almost okay or you might have the middle class one where maybe you have your you have a nice tent but maybe the bathroom and shower facilities are outside so there is those things and then you have more of the basic tent kind of setups that you could have which everything's a little more 
rougher, let's say. I mean, all these you're gonna go through, one of the goats who are stay at, one of the big rules they have is at night, you do not walk around by yourself because there are animals out there. I mean, where we're staying, our, our, our tent is right behind us. I mean, our buffalo were rubbing against my tent last night. We could hear the lions, you could hear all the sounds, and it's fantastic. But you know that you'll be safe here, and usually there's actually people walking around, checking the perimeter, trying to scare off the, the, the more dangerous animals and things like that. So you know the word too much, but it is important that you don't wander around, especially if you have little kids. And little kids can come to Serengeti. My kids have loved it. But you want to make sure you let them know, and someone will walk you to the restaurant or to the bar and walk you back after dark. Now, when it's light out, usually you're fine. You don't have to ask anybody. But at nighttime, it is vital that you do that, okay? And the thing is, is if you're going to be going in these camps, they'll have a camp for you, and then they'll have the food in another spot, okay? So the restaurant or bar they might have, and reception will be at a different location. So it will be a little bit of a walk when you're there, okay, to get to them. And I guess that's why it might be important for us next to talk about is safety. Now, I talked about not walking by yourself, all right? But in general, safety kind of stuff might really boil down to bugs and sun. Okay, because you're going to be in a Jeep all the time, so you're not going to get eaten by lions. Don't worry, okay, unless you like go and go, hello, Mr. Lion. Yes, then you might have a problem, but otherwise you'll be okay. But honestly, the sun here is very strong. We're also very near the equator as well. So it is very, very, you know, lobster red inducing heat here in the summertime, but also just the, the power of the sun can be dangerous. So make sure you're, you're, you're wearing your long sleeve shirts. I've rolled mine up, long pants. I know you're like, oh, it's hot, Mark. Why would I do that? because it also keeps the bugs from biting you if you're covered up as much as you can. And that wide brim hat keeps the sun off and things like that, because that's gonna be your biggest danger, okay? Because there are a lot of bugs here. I got a tick off me the other night, okay? So like, hey, there, these things do happen. Mosquitoes do come. Also the tsetse fly, it's, you're not gonna see it so much in this part of the Serengeti, but other parts where there's more foliage and less wind, you will see more of them. And they do love the color black and dark blue. So do not wear any black and do not wear any dark blue when you do come here, okay? Because that could be, you know, kind of problematic. Another safety thing is do not drink the water, okay? Anywhere you're staying, don't drink that. It is only bottled water. Brush your teeth with bottled water, okay? A lot of the lodges will actually provide you with water. Also, your tour companies will most likely have water bottles for you as well, but it's never a bad idea to have like your refillable water bottle. Fill that up before you go on your trip so you have something and keep it filled when you can because that can be important for you because the dehydration with all the heat and stuff can add up. And with all the dust you'll have, that can be another thing. So if you have like asthma and stuff like that and dust causes you problems, you have a lot of dust on these dusty roads because the car is going by. The other Jeeps kick up a lot of dust. So either shut the window real quick or maybe have a scarf to cover up your face, okay? Now I've already talked about not getting out of the Jeep because you're not allowed to. That's another safety thing. Also, you might want to look into what shots and vaccines you need to come here. I know when we flew in, they were asking for a yellow fever vaccine, but we flew in from Rwanda. And so like, no, we want to see, you know, where, where you need to be coming from and what, what vaccines you have. So you might need to have yellow fever, but you need to check to make sure based on where you're flying in from, what country you're from, and what they're calling for those days. So I always look at the CDC website to ask what vaccines I should have, like Hep A, Hep B, you know, diphtheria, tetanus, whatever, typhoid. There's different things you might want to get before you come um, because if you don't have your yellow fever vaccine and they're requiring it, they'll make you pay for one at the border. Okay, so you have to get one there and you don't want to do that. Okay, get it done at home so it's taken care of. Now, I know I talked about not drinking the bottled water. So some people worry about, hey, Mark, what, what am I going to eat or how do I eat when I'm on, in the Serengeti? I mean, what do we have? Well, here's the thing is if you're in the most of the tour companies are going to have you stay at lodges, they give you breakfast and dinner. Okay, so those are already taken care of. And lunch is usually a picnic that's prepared from the lodge you stayed in the night before. Okay, that's kind of a usual thing. And we've had a lot of like stews kind of stuff, like beef stew, chicken stew. We've had pasta. Heck, the kids had like little slices of pizza the other day. It's really kind of, you know, lots of rice and things like that. There's a lot of mix that you'll have. So it's not necessarily just sandwiches and go. Now, if you're on the budget ones and some of the, the, the cheaper ones, it might just be sandwiches. If you're in the middle class or luxury ones, it's going to be like nicer food and stuff like that like you know we have the tin plates and all these kind of things and they set up the table for you to have the picnic and stuff like that so that is good and i will say is i know when we came they said you will not go hungry and they weren't wrong i mean the food has been very good it's been very filling there's been a lot of it and 
the thing is, is usually breakfast is like fruit and then you pick like an omelet or something like that. We've had um, dinners. It's usually like two or three courses you could choose between for your mains. Like there was like usually a meat, a veggie and a fish has been our options. And then usually there's like a starter and there's always good soups. Okay. Whether, I mean, I've had good spinach soup. I've had good you know, pumpkin soup. I've had cauliflower soup. It's all been good. So you have these kind of things. And the thing is your food is usually included in the tour, which is nice, but your drinks are not. So if you've got breakfast or, or dinner kind of things, and it's not a picnic lunch, if you're getting a beer or a soda, you pay for that on your own. Water, water is hit and miss. Like water, if it's on the tour in the Jeep, it's, it's usually free. But if you're going to order it for dinner, you might have to pay for that, okay? But again, it depends on the, which one of the three types of tours you do pick. Now, another thing people like to know is, hey, Mark, what are the toilets like when you're out in the Serengeti? Well, let me show you all the toilets we have. Oh wait, there are no toilets out there. No, there's no toilets out there. So you go pee next to the van, okay? Next to the Jeep or behind the Jeep, nowhere else. So before you go out for the day, make sure you use the washroom or the toilet at your camp so you get everything out so you can save it all up. So when you come back, you can go again later because otherwise again, you're out there. Okay, so have a heads up for that. Now, if you're at your camps, most of them will have like sit down toilets. Some of them might have pit latrines uh, in some places as well, but we've had no problems in any places we've gone. When you come into the Serengeti or any of the parks at like kind of the like entry zones, they'll have a restroom there you can go use, which will have normal facilities. So you'll be fine there like that. So if you wanna kind of do that before you go into the park, they are there for you, okay? Now, the next thing we need to talk about is what you're going to wear when you go on a safari. And the thing is, like I said, no black or blue or dark blue, and that's because the tsetse flies will eat you alive. It is not a joke, okay? You gotta be careful with that. Now, I'm not saying you have to have a cool safari outfit like me every day, but honestly, the khakis and the greens like this, that is your best clothing options in terms of colors. That's what you wanna have. I mean, I've seen some people in some bright colors out here and stuff like that, and Daisy Duke shorts, you did not come prepared for the right thing. And if you talk to the guides, like, yeah, you can wear whatever you want, but just realize there might be some ramifications for that. So, you know, a bite here or there, so you don't want to be careful. So when you're buying your clothes, get the lightweight safari stuff, like at your REI or or like in, in the Netherlands, I went to Beaver and they had the safari stuff for you. So you got these lightweight shirts and lightweight pants that, you, that are easy to go. These actually zip off at the knee if I want to have shorts on, but you want to make sure long sleeve shirts, long sleeve pants, long sleeve pants, obviously, long pants, um, because it does help with the bugs. Also, it helps with the sun. And the thing is, I'm actually layering because I've got my t-shirt underneath, so if I get too hot, I can take it off. And a lot of times it'll depend on the weather you have. And of course, the weather is seasonal, so you want to be careful with that. It makes sure you do know the seasons when you do come here. March through May is usually the rainy, rainier season. Like, that's when you probably avoid it the most. June, July, August, September, October, that's the dry season. That's when most tourists come. Uh, the Great Migration, where you see the stuff going through the rivers, like July and August. So you do have a heads up for those in terms of some months you want to see or might want to come. You don't need to bring any hiking boots because you're in the Jeep all the time. So bring comfortable shoes that you can do like light walks in because some of these lodges will actually have pathways you can walk on and stuff like that and do a little walk with them. So that's kind of nice. Now another kind of footwear you need to bring are some flip flops because if you're going to be going out to the shower or you're going to go out to the restroom or maybe it's the end of the day and you're all dusty, you don't want to wear your dusty shoes, uh, those flip flops can really pay off. So maybe throw those in the back of your bag just for another pair of shoes to have, okay? Now, other things you may want to make sure you bring, I told you about the bug spray and, and sunblock. That's another thing you want to be wearing all the time. You might want to buy some bug bands and stuff like that. We have those. Another thing you might want to do with your clothes is you might want to put permethrin on them, which is a really heavy duty bug spray. So you actually treat your clothes with it before you come here and it lasts like five or six washes. So when you're here, it'll, it'll be fine. To, and it really does keep the bugs away and kills the bugs and ticks and stuff like that. So that's really helpful. I guess you might want to know with the clothes, what about laundry? Well, if you're in some of the luxury camping sites they might actually have laundry for you so you can give your stuff your clothes away for those things but when you're coming here you'll want to pack light okay everything needs to fit into a jeep okay and if you got six people that fill up that jeep there's not a lot of extra room left so you want to make sure you're packing as less as possible or as least as possible and for those of you that are going to be flying into the San Grady not like coming in from you know Kilimanjaro in the jeeps but actually flying to one of the small fields here what you need to realize the jeeps you're probably going to take are going to be open-sided so it's even more dust so make sure you have that scarf, okay? Now, another thing I want to say is with kids, uh, my kids have loved. Guys, have you loved the Serengeti? Yeah. 
Yeah, so they're, they've had a good time here as well, seeing the animals and all kinds of stuff. Seeing the Maasai people when we were coming in and, and, and doing this stuff with them. It's really kind of a great experience for the kids and it's safe for them to come here and they'll enjoy it as well. So no problems in terms of that things. And in general, Tanzania is very friendly and pretty safe as well. So you're kind of like, it's like a double awesomeness for, for families coming here. And also we were here actually with the grandparents as well. So <laughs> Bibi, grandma is like, Bibi is everywhere. Come here, Bibi and, and Babu, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is grandpa like everyone's calling my parents grandma and grandpa in Swahili so it is kind of a cool thing oh in terms of the language most likely it's going to be Swahili you're going to hear here but English is everywhere okay so you're not going to have a problem with that if you're with your English but the thing is when you're coming around you will hear Swahili and, and Jambo is hello that's kind of a popular one you're going to hear Asante uh, which is thank you is always a nice one to know um, there's always some other fun things like you'll watch Lion King like I feel like I've seen Lion King when I go by here I thought I saw Pride Rock and then they call the lion Simba well, Simba means lion in Swahili, so you do have that. So it's kind of funny that there's some words you hear them talking on the radio, like Simba, oh, there's a lion around here somewhere. So it is kind of a cool thing. In terms of money though, there's no ATMs out in the Serengeti. You need to bring cash, okay? Because you do tip your drivers and you do tip the staff and the camps you stay at. The camps depend, let's say $10 is the middle. Okay, if you're staying at a nicer one, it's more than $10 per day. A cheaper one, you know, it's, it's less than $10 a day, but $10 a day is like the average daily thing you're going to give for your room, okay, as a thank you. And there'll be a tip, not jar, like a tip box at the reception. You'll put that money at the end, okay? And your driver or guide, you're going to tip them about $10 per person. Well, 5 to $10 per person, depending on how many people are there. At least $20 per Jeep that's going. But, I mean, if you're six of you and you're only giving 20 you're cheap, okay? So it's about 10 bucks a day. And you pay them at the end of your tour and you do it that way, all right? Because they're going to do a lot for you. So make sure you're doing that. Another thing with money, U.S. dollars is what you'll pay with things here. I mean, you can pay with Tanzanian shillings too. But in the tourism industry, dollars are just fine. So you can just, just bring some newer dollar bills. I'm not saying brand new bills. I'm just saying like, since the last 10, 15 year dollar bills with the big heads on them, have that nice and crisp and clean. You'll need that anyway for your visa coming in, but that's the way you're gonna do things because you can't get any cash when you're here. Some of the camps actually do take credit cards. So you might sign your bill and pay at the end, but do have a heads up for that. Cause once you're in here, you only have the money that you brought in with you, okay? And then we have the technology side of things. Look, you are going to take so many pictures and videos when you're here. I'm sure you've seen a lot in this video. And I was going through three batteries every day when I've been here. The thing is, I brought six batteries with me and I'm charging all the other ones all the time. OK, so make sure you're bringing your camera, bring the telephoto lens for it, bring multiple extra, but not just one, but multiple extra batteries for your camera. Also bring a couple power banks, you know, the backup batteries, have those as well, because when you're out in the Serengeti on a full day and you're picking it out there and burning through batteries and all these kind of things, having that extra battery backup to recharge your phone, if you want to charge that, is really, really helpful. So have that. Now, in terms of the plugs they have here, they use the UK system, you know, like the three prong plugs. That's what they have here. I'll show a picture of a, a typical thing here. You're not going to have a lot of plugs, okay? So what I suggest, bring a converter that has multiple USB ports on it so you can plug in a normal plug and then have the USB ports on top because one place we stayed only had one plug. Where we're here today actually has three plugs. So we do have a few options, but but you want to be careful with that, okay? Also, if you're looking for Wi-Fi, internet, those kind of things, look, I've had cell service for like phone calls, but like 4G, those kind of things, that doesn't happen when you're here. Maybe somebody got some occasionally, but in general, it's, it's maybe phone call stuff, uh, and that's about it. So don't look for any 4G, sending your Instagram pictures, things like that. If you're at a nicer camp, they might have a Wi-Fi signal, maybe, but don't expect it to last very long or be very strong or be able to stream videos and stuff like that. So if you're a family, bring in your kids, maybe download a few movies for the evening time that they can watch in the rooms because you're not going to go wander around at night because... I mean, when we, we were at last night, we got in and we flashed the flashlight out here and this entire field was full of buffalo. I mean, there's tracks everywhere. It was like, whoa, okay, we're going to stay inside. But it was really cool at the same time. Anyway, I hope this helps you know a little bit more about what to expect when you come here to Tanzania and you go on safari in the Serengeti and around here. It's been fantastic. It's been a great family adventure. We have three generations here loving it from grandma and grandpa to the grandkids. And so we wish you a great time here in Tanzania or Winnie, anywhere you're going to go on safari. I hope this can help. Anyway, I wish you all the best. If you want to see other travel videos, click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we put out honest travel videos from places that we go to all the time to help other honest and awesome fellow travelers like yourself whenever you travel too. So I hope that really made sense because 
I'm just really enjoying myself here. It's just so wonderful. Anyway, bye from the Serengeti.